Welcome to Just One Song. My name is Kurt Bemke, and in this program, our goal is to write one song in 45 minutes. But the song doesn't have to be good, it just has to exist. With me tonight is Taylor Shirley and Wolfgang Alexander. Hello. Yes. Yo, Taylor's up? playing a little thing he just cooked up on the spot. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Yeah? Doing good. I'm good. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and uh, the musicians you are. Uh, I guess I can go first. Uh, so my name's Taylor Shirley. Okay. A lot of people just call me Shirley. It's my last name. Like, it's just been my, like, nickname, I guess, forever. And I've just, like, changed the spelling of it because I think it's cool. Sure. Uh, yeah, Shirley. And then I play trumpet. Uh, other random stuff. I guess, like, a little bit of, like, keyboard. I like making, like, little jams and stuff. Yeah. It's, like, my biggest thing, I feel like, is I like just making cool, like, mini songs. I don't know if that's what you call them. Um, They're songs. Yeah, I guess yeah. you call it a song. It's music. Uh, but I play in multiple bands. I've had my own, like, jazz combo. Um, I play in a group called Memory Den. That's pretty cool. And we have, like, music. Uh, and I play trumpet in that. That's me, I guess. Uh-huh. I was in marching band in high school, so that's how I learned trumpet. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so I played trumpet in high school. That's how I learned trumpet. And then uh, just kind of built from there. And then I'm like a music major in college, so that's cool, I guess. Where do you go? I go to Fullerton Junior College. <laughs> community uh, college? Yeah, I go, it is a community college. <laughs> they have a great music program. Emphasis though. on the junior. The junior. Yeah. The really Super Weenie Hut Junior <laughs> College. <laughs> oh, man, um, I don't have to cut that for copyright or anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that's me. That's how I met Wolf was at that school. Yeah, also that's how I met Wolf. Yeah, that's how yeah. Weenie Hut Junior College. That junior school college. brought all of us together, like... In different times, actually. yeah, it was super funny. It Which did. We could get about into five right years now. apart, I think. Hey, no, it's not, three not years. as much. Yeah. yeah, my time at Fullerton College was about five years. Yeah, which is That's right. hard to say. Uh-huh. I spent four. Yeah, That's, That's what it takes. Four, like four it to five years for the two-year yeah. degree. That's great, what it's pro- about. great, yeah. great school, great program there, though. Uh, yeah, seriously, pretty good music. Pretty good is an understatement. There's a really good music program there. It is. So tell me about. Tell us about yourself, Wolf. Um, I'm a bass player. Um, I play in a couple groups um, right now. Um, I'm playing bass both in a group with this um, kind of rapper, hip hop artist named Rocky Angelini, um, based out of Santa Ana. They're super sick. Which is super cool. Yeah. Nice little mix of like hip hop, a little bit of jazz. Um, that's been a great time, and I just joined this other group with this um, kind of R&B singer songwriter. Um, Paige Williams. Okay. This is a recent um, group I joined, and yeah, um, that's what I've been mainly doing, as well as going to school. It's awesome. How do you guys like? How do you guys feel about collaborating and like uh, making music, especially like now with what's going on with the coronavirus and pan- and the pandemic? How's that affected your? Like comparing it to before, like Wolf and I played. Like, we met in, like, ensembles at school, so we played, like, a lot of jazz at school, and then we played in, like, jazz ensembles outside of school, mm-hmm. so that was, like, how we first started kind of making music, yeah. or, like, playing music together, and then we've kind of, like, now that we live together, we haven't done, like, any, like, crazy collaboration, but, like, we'll mess around with, like, random stuff, or I'll mm-hmm. be like, oh, I have this really cool thing, and I, I've been, like, writing out a lot of my music and just, like, listening to, like, mid, like and have the MIDI playback. Yeah. I've written a lot of music that way, um, and I think it's, like, interesting to do it that way. It's, like, well, a different you just, you just mindset. you just released an LP, too. I did, yeah. I made it all on this keyboard that I'm holding. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's that, a an LP Yamaha. dedicated to my cat. It's a Yamaha DX. Highly recommended. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's super dope. I saw someone with it, and I was like, yeah, this is dope. The I, band I play in has like three of them, and we use them all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I when we lived together, like you played it all the time. We made some pretty fun stuff of it. Yeah, yeah. A majority of the videos we've made, because we've done a couple like YouTube, YouTube. covers of like video game stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like my weird hidden passion that oh, like I, I don't do really that. tell anyone your, about. I love what you do. Like I love the stuff you guys. It's really so, fun. To yeah, watch we do like play. high effort. Like, (laughs) like, I guess, I don't want to say acoustic, but, like, high effort covers with, like, real instruments of, like, older, I guess, retro, I guess is what you call it, retro games. Um, It's not necessarily, like, 
Primarily it, Nintendo. Yeah, primarily yeah. Nintendo. It's yeah. like especially my thing. what we've released. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time where I was just like transcribing so many Nintendo tunes. I just like had like literally like like a very large collection of like niche stuff, and I was like submitting them to like websites and stuff of like other Nintendo sheet music. Uh, shout out <laughs> ninsheetmusic.org. It's sick. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, so then I was like, let's turn those into like something, and I turned them into like YouTube covers with Wolf. Yeah, he's helped me do that because and filming and everything, it's cool, it's hard. Mm-hmm. So that was I learned a lot doing all that. Yeah, that's been fun. That's been a like, I guess the most. That's like our most collab, probably. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was gonna say. And it was like interesting because it's like we play jazz stuff, and I guess that's like covers, right? And then we do that Nintendo stuff, and that's like covers as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't know, it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool like stepping stone and like learning how to like like mix things all on your own, record everything, visually everything. Like I taught myself how to edit through all of those and everything. Like I had like zero, not zero, but I had like very little experience when it comes to like posting on YouTube. So I've just been using like YouTube as like a creative outlet, mm-hmm. which I think is cool because no one can really tell you what to do, and you can put whatever you no. want. And it's right. it's super accessible. It's super accessible it's everywhere. And Absolutely, it's open. Mm-hmm. everyone uses it. Yeah, yeah. And I, something I liked about the recordings, too, and I don't know if it's, like, common or not, um, or if maybe it's more difficult for us, but we make our recordings not necessarily live, but, um, like, the videos that it's capturing is what you're hearing kind of thing. Okay. So that's kind of cool. I think that's a cool yeah. aspect of it. And it's, how much mixing goes into that? Like, is it mostly just leveling? You guys don't throw on too many effects. Not really. Maybe there's been, like, a couple moments where I'm, like, I've had to fake that or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just because it's, like, really hard to recreate, like... Really experimental. Like, 16-bit of. thunder. Like, how do you recreate <laughs> that? And I, right, and I bought a yeah. thunder tube to try and recreate it, but it, like, wasn't the same sound. Oh. Uh, which, just like, is frustrating. And reverb. So I, I just, like, drowned it in reverb octave down, and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. Which is cool, because I learned how to, like, use that and do that on yeah. Logic and stuff. So it's Well, like, you, nothing wrong with... You write a song, yeah. or you, you, you arrange something. Mm-hmm. You want it to sound accurate, especially if you're going for a cover. Yeah, totally. And you want to do it justice. And mm-hmm. the cool thing with, like, uh, with, like Nintendo, is Koji Kondo the, like was he the primary the guy. composer for him he's the guy you want to do justice to for a composer like Koji Kondo yeah mm-hmm. so I, I think there's nothing wrong with going in and digitally editing totally editing stuff and with like a thunder stick or an effect mm-hmm. if you're trying to be accurate yeah you have to go in yeah. and EQ it and I don't know because a lot of it was just like oh it. here we have like this uh, like it's a noise channel on the NES and it's like white noise you know right. essentially and it's just like almost static like a tv and he's just like manipulating in a certain way right but Super yeah cool. i love koji kondo i've yeah. like written out so Shout many of out. his of his like pieces like it's I'm, it's crazy i've learned so much from him he's cool mm-hmm. it, it, it just the, the the span of all the i don't want to say genres but the different styles of music he, his he composition style is like crazy he's it's, like he's literally touched everything and it sounds it's like corny because it's like oh you did it all with like like inside with like what, what am I trying to say? Like, he was just so limited, but he's able to like reach so many styles, which I find so cool yeah. and fascinating. One topic we talk about on the shows a lot is the idea of how, how limitations can actually force you to be more creative and to have to compose with 16 bit, mm-hmm. 16 bits of information. A lot alone like five channels of audio, right. four channels of audio at best. At best, yeah. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. it's awesome. And then all other sounds have to stop when like, like like a sword attack is happening you know what i mean right like like just say like legend of zelda he like swipes his sword or something and like it makes a sound but like all the audio has to stop because that's like you know there's only so many layers that can happen at the same time i find that like crazy and how you don't lose sight of like i guess like sight of the composition or like you don't lose what's actually like occurring in the music yeah yeah that's pretty yeah it's cool well it's like with the american systems versus the japanese systems they're more complicated on the japanese systems yeah than they are on the American, so mm-hmm. you get the simplicity. Um, you know, when I was at Florida College, I took a course with Marcus Berger, the German jazz musician. I had him once, I remember yeah. Him, yeah. Awesome guy, interesting guy, great classes, but I remember he always told us the best teacher to teach you music is a good album. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you don't, I mean, you can take songwriting classes, you can do all these things, but if you study a good mm-hmm. album and you listen to it, analyze what makes it great find what you like and like study. Yeah. yeah so my question to you both has there i mean i not not explicitly koji kondo or 
this this music, but by by doing covers with jazz and the video game music, do you has that influenced your own composing and shaped how you write and how you come up with ideas? Yeah, for sure. Same. Like I would say, like the best, um, like reference guide is just the music itself that you're trying mm-hmm. to like convey. Sometimes I have to re- remind myself where like I'm trying to do something and I'm like, oh yeah, just reference the song. Like absolutely. What? Yeah. what why am I like trying to struggle? Like, what's the harmony here? Like, yeah. Just reference the music, like, and you'll it'll tell you. Like, it's that is like the best teacher is like the music itself because it's like the actual application of it. Like, especially when you're learning theory and stuff. Yeah. That's like I feel like a lot of people get caught up in stuff like that where it's like the theoretical aspects. Oh, like I could like, I could. Uh, do this progression and this one because like it works and like that's what I yeah. learn. It's I find I tell I think a lot of people when they're studying theory and learning to write, they always approach it from a theory standpoint. Yeah, because it's fine. It's a great guide to like write out the types of scales you mm-hmm. can use. But at the end of the day, you, I think it is ultimately detrimental to the creative process because you're like, oh, that sounded good, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and you have to get out of that. Like no, totally. No, no. Theory is there to make sense of what you wrote. Totally. To justify it that way. Yeah. If it sounds good to you, that's what's important. Mm-hmm. I think. I've taken think... a lot of like harmony classes with that study Bach and stuff like that, and like that's all cool. And then like, and you're like, oh wow, that was that whole progression was like so crazy. Like what, what Bach did, that's so that's so dope. But then like then you like put it into something like modern, and you're like, well, that's Bach wouldn't do that. Like why is that? Why does that sound good? Like he but he wouldn't do that. Like, wouldn't he though? But, like, he would. He does break his own rules, right. you know? And, Absolutely. like, other p- composers, like, progress on it. And it's, like, uh, we, like they have to. We, like, we study them so in depth yeah. that we think... I think there's a general attitude that they were infallible. And, like, if they break the rules, it's okay because it's Bach breaking his yeah. own rules or <laughs> yeah. whatever. But also, we're like, but you can't break the rules. But we forget, so like, odd, like yeah. Beethoven and yeah. Mozart and all they of... They broke the rules all the time. I mean, the rules oh. weren't really rules. They weren't. No, they, they were just exactly. writing, yeah. It was just the style. But it was just, like, their ears. It they was, were... like, a rule because it sounded kind of bad. They were you know? improvisers. Yeah, they were just... That's what they were. Yeah. Yes. And they created, like, a blueprint, which totally. is great to, like, learn off of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, remember, I forgot where I heard this from, but I loved this quote. It was, like, or, like, kind of reference, where it's all, like... Um, you don't learn the alphabet to learn how to speak, right? Like right. you're you're already talking by the time mm. you're learning the alphabet. Interesting. You learn the alphabet right? to make yeah. sense of what you're To make you're sense hearing. of what you're. Yeah, no one teaches you the song "Happy Birthday," like you just know the song "Happy <laughs> Birthday" and like how it goes in the melody. You know, it's a right. cultural thing it's for like, sure. Yeah, and that's that's like that's studying like Western classical music, but yeah, we don't we don't violate their rules that we derived from their compositions you gotta start somewhere yeah. yeah that's where it started i guess and it's good to like know the rules it is important to know the rules in order to break the rules i think that's also yeah but not to get like i i, I guess we can think of rules as limitations too to creativity that's true you know and not everyone's like studied that music but like they've learned from somewhere like i don't know like just like rock guitar players yeah like, they, they just heard that music from somewhere else and, like, kind of replicated it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, like... And then they, like, started messing around and they broke those rules, I guess, if that's what you want to call right. it. Right. Mm-hmm. You, well, you break the, the standards of yeah. the time. Like, you learn something, you learn the basics, and you're just like, okay, well, that kind of sucks. Like, can you kind of me... just, like, build upon it? <laughs> yeah, how, how can I change this so it sounds, like, better right. to your ears? I think, well, music... I think music changes when you run out of ways to innovate with it, with a specific yeah. style. You know, like when jazz first became popular, people hated it because it wasn't real music. Like the definition of what we generally consider music isn't a thing. Like, do you remember when electronic music first became like this massive thing? I not I don't mean like with the invention of the electronic synthesizer. Just like I guess it was the theremin using. I said be the first and like synthesizers of like yeah. If you really bring it far back. Even then, it wasn't like electronic music as what we think of it today, though. I think when you say electronic music, people like quote unquote techno. Yes, that would be okay. like er, 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 early two thousands, early I guess I mean, late nineties. Commonplace and mainstream. Yeah, that's what I mean to say. Eighties, right? Eighties, yeah, with like Devo. Right. Seventy nine, seventy eight, seventy nine. Right. 
Uh, but it, it, was, it was off-putting because, like, uh, like a 